Some of y'all were straight up brutal with your questions. I know I said hit me with them, but dang, did y'all have to run me over with an 18-wheeler truck? Slap on your listening ears, kitties. We're about to get serious in this piece. Now for anyone new here, hi, I'm TVC, a female Muslim African YouTuber who made the mistake of asking free-thinking Americans and foreigners to ask a faith-endowed Muslim hard-hitting question. <sighs> that was a mouthful. I thought y'all would ask me stuff like why we pray five times a day or why we perform ablutions with water, but oh my god, some of the questions I got actually made me recluse myself, like come on. Anyway. I have to give a shout out to Hoda Ahmed who basically went through and answered nearly all the questions asked of me. At first I thought it annoying, then it was kinda nice having someone eager and willing to answer them cause it's such a Muslim thing to do. We hate leaving people in ignorance, we love to explain the hows and whys. So I'll try and first answer questions Hoda didn't get to and then I'll chime in my two cents on questions he did answer and lastly I'll address something that really, really made me uncomfortable. Reading it was not easy. First question, what is your favorite holiday and why? Now you'd think I'd instantly say Ramadan, but no. My favorite holiday used to be Christmas. I loved it so much as a kid and despite not celebrating it, I looked forward to it every year. But I use the term loved because I'm actively trying to make Salah my favorite. It comes twice a year and it's basically the Christmas and Easter of Islam. Wait. Now that I think about it, our religions are a little too similar. So basically, Ramadan is like the Islamic version of Lent, right? If so, what are your positive goals for Ramadan besides doing no harm and fasting? I would like to know more. Well, I had a close friend and roommate who was a Catholic. She explained Lent to me was sort of like abstaining from doing what you love to do. So yeah, I think the two things are very similar. My goal for Ramadan is to spread Islamic awareness as evident by this video, not to curse and mm, that's about it really. Wow. You said before you're often mistaken as not Muslim because you don't wear a hijab. Could you go into detail on more of the religious significance regarding this? Well, I'm only mistaken as not Muslim on YouTube because my avatar doesn't really cover up much. <laughs> In real life, you can pretty much sum up I'm Muslim because my hair is covered up 60 to 80% of the time, depending on my hairstyle. But people also tend to get confused all the same because they claim that not only don't I have the facial features of a typical Muslim woman, but I don't exhibit the same attributes and personality types. Basically, they're trying to say I'm different. The religious significance for a lot of people is that if a woman covers her hair, she's protecting her integrity, I guess. It's like she's keeping herself special for her husband. Now, with the way times have changed, a lot of people take the covering of hair aspect to a whole nother level. Now, I am no scholar, but I know for a fact that the women who cover their hair tend to commit more sins and atrocities than those that don't. But because they cover their hair, society deems them innocent and unquestionable. Muslim men need to get it through their thick skulls that just because a woman looks like this on the outside doesn't mean in a saint's heart that dwells underneath. I need to move on from this topic before I get triggered. Is there some sort of written reason, something similar to the Bible, for why females are treated the way they are? And I thought that modern tech in Muslim regions of the world were not very present. Do you reside outside of those regions? Is the reason you use an avatar because of your beliefs? Thanks for being awesome. You're awesome too. Now, first off, let me answer your first question. No, there is no valid reason for Muslim females to be treated the way they are. I'll talk more about that in a minute. To your second question, Muslim regions, as you say, are very well advanced. Trust me on this one. And yes and no, where, where I live kinda actually has an equal number of Muslims and Christians. But a lot of people can label it as a Muslim region, but I don't know, it depends on your perspective. And lastly, to your final question, no. I use my avatar because I love the concept because I first started seeing people like IHE, Silver Spark, and Pi Guy Rules use it. My beliefs have zero influence on my avatar, as you can tell, and my place of living also doesn't have any impact to it. So to answer your underlining question that you're probably too nice to ask, no, I don't live where women are stoned to death or my brother will mercy kill me because I have a blog. Now to your question of how our women are being treated, I'd just like to go on record and state that a lot of Muslim men nowadays love to use Islam as a way to justify their actions. 
they try to use different methods to forward whatever agenda they have and say well it was written as a way to validate their horrific behavior and when you try to question it they twist everything and make it seem like you're questioning Allah himself this is how they control and treat women the way they do they make them they make them believe that what they do is right because God willed it, which he didn't. And if they question it, they are questioning God, which makes the woman the bad guy in the situation. Man, I am really getting triggered here. I have a few questions. There's a lot about Islam I'd like to know more of, especially with the politics around it. My first question, I know you don't like to discuss where you are from, but do you live in an Islamic nation? Only because there is a lot about their system of government and the way it inter- interwines with the justice system. No, I don't believe my country identifies itself as an Islamic nation. Like I said, we've got a lot of Christians too. And it's not like I don't like to discuss where I'm from because I'm afraid or anything. I actually really much want to share with you all where I'm from and how things are done here. But I've held back as an incentive for myself and you guys for when I hit 100k subscribers. It's kind of like my main channel goal at the moment. After that, my next goal is get a million subs or be featured in a fine bros react show. Whichever comes first. You Muslim? Come to Arstatska. We accept any religion. Christian, Muslim, Buddhism, Taoism, Kron, Nurgle, Tzinchi, Slanis, Tachankhan. Any religion we accept in Arstoketskan Empire as long as you accept communist government. Um, what did I just read? <laughs> You're Arabic? Wow, that explains how you talk. Um, do you mean Arabian? Because Arabic is a language, not a race. And no, I'm not Arabian, I'm African. If you don't mind this question, what is your opinion on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? I personally believe that both Israeli and Palestine deserve to be their own separate states such countries, but maybe I'm just biased in some way since I'm Jewish. Not gonna lie to you, I have no idea. I didn't even know the whole Israeli-Palestinian thing till I watched that whole video, History of Everything. I had no idea what was going on in that portion of the world. And yay, a Jewish person. I think you're the first Jewish person I've ever met. But yeah, I'm gonna have to research on this and get back to you. So ask me this question again and I'll try and have a more cohesive answer. Also, have a good Ramadan. I like you even more knowing that you are so open about your religious beliefs, even when there are some terrible people out there who hate people only based on their religious beliefs. Thank you. I thought you were Mexican. Girl, you're confusing. I think Hoda's answer here was perfect. Islam is religion, not a race. But yeah, like I said, African. Is it hard to fast all day for a month? I myself am hypoglyphic glycemic oh boy i hope i pronounced that right so it's kind of hard to fast even when i want to also is it appropriate for me to wish someone happy ramadan yes it is very very hard but we get used to it and like hoda says we women get days off because we can't fast when we're on our periods so depending on how long your period lasts you're freed from fasting and you get to repay the days you miss whenever you can for the rest of the year before the next ramadan comes around i'm gonna be honest with you i cannot wait till my next period right now what program do you use for your videos? Wrong video to act this, but Camtasia Studio 8. I think it's cool that she's Muslim and she's celebrating this holiday. Yeah, but I don't think she can make it without cursing. I mean, the world's already crazy now that we've got a madman in office. Shut up, Deepool. We're not supposed to talk about politics. Also, we're supposed to show support. I'm just saying, a guy cursed me the other day and I ended up having to... Dang it, Deepool! <laughs> That was funny. I enjoyed reading that. I severely enjoyed reading that. What does Ramadan mean? Well, Google says Ramadan is the ninth month of the Muslim year, during which strict fasting is observed from dawn to sunset. Hope that helps. We just finished studying Islam in school. Oh man, it would have been so cool if you got a teacher to play this in class. Anyone else should please try and see if they can make this a reality for me. So for fasting, is it just for dinner? Why do you refrain from eating and drinking? I think I answered this in a previous question. But no, after we break our fast, most people just reschedule their three daily meals to night time. You break your fast at sunset, which is 7 p.m. my time. And, and sometimes people eat around 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. like, you know, lunch, dinner. So if I'm not passed out by then, I tend to do the same. And I wake up by 3 a.m. to do sahur, which is like the pre-eating before the next fast starts at 5 a.m. So I have a little food and energy to carry me through the day. Long story short, I'm really sleepy these days. Patrick, is mayonnaise a part of Ramadan? Are you trolling me? Do Muslims believe in God or something else? 
Allah is the one true God. So yeah, we believe in God. One God. Like the Christians and Jews. I got a question. Is virus a living thing? Apparently, no. But some people say viruses today are thought as being in a gray area between living and non-living. So who knew when I replied you kinda, I was actually right. Okay, now I'm gonna address something that happened in the Ramadan update video. A question was asked by Shank X. At first, I was eager to answer these questions and would have brought up some great points to it. But the reply link turned into something horrifying. Now, I'm not mad at Shank or anything, but I'm just shocked. Some of the things he said made me sad. And the sadness wasn't so much at what he said, but at the facts he brought up. Then the chain of replies just became worse and I could not believe anyone could say stuff like that or think like that. He had me so confused and sick to my stomach. To believe my religion was viewed this way, it made no sense. Hoda was a true champion to keep his cool. But I wouldn't know what I would have done if it was me in that situation. I know so many people personally who would have freaked the hell out if they were there. If they were the one being asked this question because where I'm from there are just some things you don't say to whatever religion it's just the rules we may have our own thoughts towards Christians and they to us but you keep them to yourself or ask them in a way that doesn't greatly offend the other party there are things that are said and ways that they are being said to other religions to respect them in a way that's that's how me and my friend used to do it and we learnt a lot from each other's religions. Granted, we may not have agreed with them, but we respected their choices and we understood their mindset and how things worked for them. Now, now I am confronted by this chain, this link of replies, this back and forth conversation that made me realize maybe people think differently than the people on my corner of the globe. Nobody in this chain was wrong, nobody is at fault, but it still doesn't change the fact that I was hurt and offended at some of the mindset presented behind it. I went and showed some of my other Muslim friends and one of them got really angry and I don't, I don't know you guys. Now I believe compared to most Muslims, I can take a joke and not everything gets to me, but I finally understand why some Muslims get sensitive and oftentimes angry. We don't know how to handle questions asked of us that defies our very faith and beliefs and makes us feel like we're being attacked personally. This whole thing made me question if I'm suitable for the job of answering questions in the first place. Now that's not the reason why for the past two Fridays I haven't answered any Q&As. I've, I've just become overworked with fasting and everything so I couldn't get it out but oh god and it's just hard because I know some of you may not like me for what I've just said because I finally understand I think in a way how Americans think and work, how foreigners think and work because you guys are just so free and honest and free speech and all that but it's really different here and it boggles my mind and it's ha something I have to adjust to. I don't want to come off as a sensitive person or somebody that said okay watch how you speak to me because I want everyone to speak how they're comfortable with but I just didn't know how to deal or handle this thing. But I'd like to make it crystal clear that I in no way believe Shank X is wrong or bad here. Not even Terjor Ben Ackerman, cool name by the way. No one is. And with that, I'll answer Shank's question. Oh yeah, I got a lot of questions, even though I know the answers to them, but I want your opinion on it. I will just do three this time, and each round I'll make them harder and more complicated as we go along. Yay. I am also an atheist and I have done a good amount of research but correct me if I am wrong. 1. How do you feel about women's rights in many Muslim dominated countries? 2. How do you feel about Sharia law like hand cut off for stealing and stoning for adultery? 3. And last, what do you think about atheists being punished in Muslim countries at worst death? P.S. If you have any questions from me about atheism, don't hesitate. I would love to answer your questions just like you answered mine. Well, for starters, I've always never understood the concept of atheism. Even if you personally don't believe in anything, wouldn't it be better to just stick to a religion just to make sure? But let's get serious. But anyway, 1. I feel women are horribly, horribly, horribly treated in Muslim-dominated countries. Not only is basic human rights stripped from them, they are 
semi-brainwashed to believe it's for their own good. Now, thankfully, there are some places that don't function like this. But the places that do get all the attention. Like, it's baffling to me how if two people are caught fornicating, is the woman that gets beaten and stoned and whipped. The men have taken themselves and truly believe they are better than us. I will admit women are men are not equal. Yes, but they are not better than us. Allah himself says men should cherish the women around them, their mothers, their sisters, and daughters. Even our prophet has tried to beat it into men's head that they cannot live without women and they should really cherish us because we try so hard. Islam even preaches that we as children should value our mothers more than our fathers. That the very great way to heaven for us is under our mother's feet. It's kind of like a metaphor saying that if you don't treat your mom right, you can and will go to hell. But you won't find those things anywhere except literally translated for you from Quran to English. But when people are preaching it out, they twist it and make it seem the father, the men, the this, the that. And you just... We women are just brushed off to the side and we cannot blame our religion. We can only blame the blockhead men who are... Two. That's another tricky thing. Apart from Saudi Arabia, and even then, that's only in Mecca itself. I've never seen someone's hand cut off. The vast majority of the world doesn't do that anymore. And the ones that do... Well... I came to a theory about this and when I asked around it was confirmed to be sort of true. The reason why cutting your hand off for stealing was introduced was because way back when thieves were rampant and it was introduced as a way to scare people into not doing it. Also back then people only had goals or camels and stuff like that. When things were stolen from you those were your whole life's wealth and valuables. Thieves would literally be able to make you bankrupt, helpless and leave you in abject poverty once they stole from you. So something like that wasn't even barbaric but merciful at the time. So instead of just killing you, we cut off your hands or hanging you or like slicing your throat or whatever. We'll cut off your hands and take away the instruments with which you caused destruction. Mind you, it was you steal once, we cut off your right hand. Twice, left hand. Three, four, right leg, left leg. You do it a fifth time and we'll just lob your head off. But in this day and age, there's so much more to steal. Phones, pencils, foods, bags, shoes, clothes. Little but relatively insignificant things that don't warrant a decapitation. Three, I've never heard of things like this happening, ever, like never. Closest thing I've heard was when I was a kid, back in primary school, I was told that if Christians converted away from their religion, they would be burnt alive. And if Muslim changed faith, the community around him should go and talk to that person and try to convince them to change back to Islam. I wasn't clear what they would do if they couldn't convince you to come back. Either leave you alone or stone you to death, I don't freaking know. But I know a lot of people who've converted from Islam to Christianity and nothing happened to them. Yes, the Muslim men around them talked to them because they were men who converted, but once they saw they were adamant in their choices, they left them alone. I remember having a close friend who was a Muslim on the outside, but a Christian at heart. Her dad was Muslim and her mom was Christian, and her whole family had Muslim names and dressed as such. But some of the kids, despite being Muslims on the outside, at heart they were Christians and had Christian tendencies, would I say? I don't really know the word to use here. And this happens a lot where I'm from. The kid chooses which religion they want and their parents still love them regardless. Mind you, it was one of the two religions the parents had, Muslim or Christian. We really didn't have, you don't have Jews or atheists or anything like that over here. Even another example, one of my closest friends who's studying in Canada right now has a Muslim dad and a Christian mom and all the kids are Christians. My neighbors are also in the same boat. All these places, I'm sorry to say, just have barbaric tendencies and cultures and marks them with the guise of Islam and the world just has to accept it. But on a closing statement, people need to know the difference between someone's culture and their religion. Trust me, the Islam practiced in Africa is worlds apart different from those practiced in the Middle East, regardless of the fact if that country has extremists or not. A lot of the things people do is just their culture seeping into their religion. So to people thinking Islam treats women badly, no. It's just the people's god-awful cultures that have survived centuries to the modern era and have convinced themselves it's a part of the religion. No, it is 
not stop brainwashing women stop belittling us stop twisting the truth and facts to suit and uplift yourself and forward your own selfish agendas we may not be equal but we are better ask any other questions for next week's video this is an angry tvc signing out